welcome to Mr Wolf's Story Den with me, Jan Fernley. We're going to do a drawing lesson today. Have you ever wondered how to draw a very naughty fox? Well, I'm going to show you how. So let's start drawing. And that was Sally jumping on the table. Oh, too many cats. So hello, here we are at the drawing table. Hello, and um, so this is the story with the characters, or me or my a pie, written and illustrated by me. And I absolutely love drawing these characters, especially the fox. They're all really naughty. And um, I think it's fun to draw a bit of a, a naughty, mischievous character like this guy. So we're going to build on what we learned with Mr Wolf, and we're going to use it to make this character here. Oh, he's just so naughty. Let's get started. Okay, so here's my sketchbook, here's my page all clean and ready to start. My character's going to sit in the middle, round about here, and as last time, we're going to draw very gently in light pencil, we're going to draw a framework so that our character doesn't pop off the page. I want you to draw a triangle like this. That's an isosceles triangle, I think we call that, and that's going to represent his body. And then on top, we're going to do an ice cream cone shape that's tipped on its side. There's the back, and there's the pointy bit of the cone, and that is going to represent his head. So that's just dead easy. I'm not See, I'm not like really pressing on, I'm just doing it ever so lightly. Now this bit is quite important because there's going to be a lot happening here. Do a little V shape just like that. And that will help us later on because we've got the neck, the scarf, the top of the waistcoat. That will help us plan that bit out. I'm not going to do straight legs. I want his legs to look believable. I want him to look like a believable fox. So I'm going to curve it slightly. And just trust me because this will help him have a real cheeky attitude. So a funny little curvy shape there. And then this one stepping out like that. And that's going to really give him some expression. I'll just make them a bit longer actually. And then his arms would go there, on his hips, I think. I haven't decided that yet, but I'll just do that for now. And that's where his ears would go. And you see, there we are. We know he's going to fit. And I can relax, and I can get on with the drawing now. Cool. I'm going to use pen. I don't always use pen. Um, I prefer pencil, really. But it'll show up best on this paper, so that's what I want. So, again, ziggy-zaggy line. He looks furry already, little tiny neck. And we'll just stop there because we've got a few things going on there, the scarf and whatnot. So we'll do with the ears. Again, look how I can make some little broken lines to make his furry head and some ziggy-zaggy lines and that all adds to his personality. And the nose, we're going to do that little upside down sort of triangle with curved edges. There you go, that's his nose and down a little smile looks quite like mr wolf but we're going to do something about that to make him very different and we'll do that um just in a minute so here he is that's the outside of his head now this is where we're going to give him some attitude two straight lines i don't want him to look cute i want him to look really mischievous so underneath these straight lines we're just going to do a curve See, I can see how naughty he's going to be already. And then I'm going to have him looking off to the side in a sneaky way. Look at that. Oh, oh, I love it. He's great. Quickly do these ears. Right. And then we'll just do a little vertical line. And then those two curly bits for the nostrils. Absolutely great. So there we can see the start of our very naughty fox. I'm going to do the scarf now. Do a little curvy bit going round, and then we'll do the knot, a little kind of bumpy circle. Not a perfect circle, nothing has to be perfect. We'll just join it up on the other side. So immediately we can see our scarf starting. I'm going to do one bit sticking out here, and I'll do the other bit coming down here like that. Okay. So. Can you see where I've done the little V behind? That's important because that's where the top of the waistcoat's going to go. And I didn't want to kind of miss that bit out. So that's why I did those little bits in pencil. 
So now I'm drawing down and just making that waistcoat, the front of the waistcoat, a V there, and we'll do the other side, another V, just matching it up, just like that, and then the armhole. There you go. Now that's the most complicated bit of the drawing, so if you've got this far, well done. And if you're worried, just pause it and look at it a couple of times. It'll all make sense. It just takes practice. Don't forget, I've been doing this for blah, 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 amount of years. So I know what I'm doing. Just do a little arm like this. That paw resting on his hip. And here's where we're going to do the legs. I'm going to go around the outside of this thigh here. Ziggy zaggy line, making it furry. I'm going to go right down to this bottom line, I think. Make his leg nice and long. And then little toes and I'm going to come up and out. Do you see? Now that's a real animal shape. It's not like a cartoon. I'm trying to be realistic with his legs. And there we do the other foot. Just like that. Beautiful. Well done. Missing an arm here so let's just quickly put that in. I'm being careful because this pen is a little bit smudgy but you know what? If it smudges it doesn't matter go. So there he is. Look at that. Hands on his hips. Just pop the back of the waistcoat in and ooh, a little few strands on the scarf and some buttons. All these details, can you see, they're all starting to bring it together. Now I'm going to add some, oh, something very important. The tail! Great big long tail story his red tail is flowing behind him and can you see little lines here just to make him look extra furry I'm putting them mostly on the outside so I can just break the shape up a little bit and it just adds a little bit more texture for me there we go so I'm going to imagine that the light is coming from this side so everything here is going to be a little darker and a little bit more in the shade. So I'll just add a few more lines here. And that'll help. And you'll see, as the drawing progresses, we'll build it up. Just have to be patient. Trust me, it's going to look fantastic. There we go. So there's my drawing. Look at how saucy he is. So I'm going to rub it out very quickly now. Oh, look at that. I've smudged it. Doesn't matter, scrap. I'm just going to carry on. So here we are. I've got a selection of foxy colours, some light, some dark. And I'm going to build them up very slowly. I'm going to start with the lightest ones first. And so that will probably be these two. Let's see how we get on with that. Now, what I'm going to be thinking about is that I need to leave some white space um, for uh, the muzzle area here and also around the belly and chest. So just very, very carefully as I'm colouring in, I'm remembering not to go over those areas that I want to be white. So especially there, just the neck, leave half of that. And, um, and also, because I want the light to be coming from the right hand side, I'm not going to be too fussy about going right up to that edge of the line. Um, it'll, you'll see this will make sense later on because it just helps to give even more depth and dimensionality to the character. Just colouring under there. And uh, I'm going to shut up now and speed up. going right up to that line I'm leaving a tiny little gap and that will almost be like a little highlight
here I'm applying the orange and see I'm starting to use little lines to emphasize the furriness and that's nice because it's, it's you're using your pencil but you're creating a different texture Okay, time to colour in his waistcoat. You can use obviously any colours you like. I'm just copying the ones that I used when I, I made the book. But it's entirely up to you. You can make it any pattern, any colour you like. Now here is where I'm taking a darker tone and I'm starting to work on the left hand side where the shadows are going you see and I'm even going to go over some of the pattern on the waistcoat just darkening it all on this side in particular so see how I start adding and building the colour on the left hand side just do those buttons as well. So now I'm going to start adding some more foxy details. I'm going to add the tips of the ears and the wrists and the feet. Um, foxes have, they're sort of naturally quite dark. Goodness, look at the size of this pencil. You can tell it's been well loved. So I'm starting with a very dark, dark brown and I'm just using some strokes just to follow the shape of the ears and I'm going to start filling that in. But I'm going to leave the interior of the ear orange. I, I quite like the way that looks. So I'm going to copy that on the other side. And then I'm just going to work around and do the wrists and the feet and see what we end up with. some more black particularly on the left hand side again emphasizing the shadows and leaving a little white highlight on the right hand side and now more brown really going for that shadow a darker brown to sculpt the the cheek and the back of the head
So now I'm going to add some more brown shadow on the left hand side of the legs. So you can really start to see that it's building up and we're getting a lovely shadowy sculptural effect. Take your time and um, you can see you've just got to be patient and build it up until you're happy with it and um, it'll, trust me, it'll just look great. It just takes a little bit of time and patience. And here I'm going to use my orange, my dark orange, and I'm just adding a little sinister shadow under those sneaky eyes, a little bit above as well. It just adds to the expression. Look at the way those eyes are popping out. Oh, he's looking so naughty. I just love it. Here we go. I'm going to add some more shadow now. I'm thinking about where the scarf would cast a shadow, where the bottom of the waistcoat would cast a shadow. So I'm just following that down and can you see it's really making that scarf come alive where, the, where his waistcoat joins together along the bottom. And I'm probably going to do a little bit of shadow on his tummy from the waistcoat. I'll use, uh, oh, and his nose as well. Um, I'm not gonna color the whole nose in. Again, leaving the top white because that makes the nose come alive, makes it look shiny. I'm just taking a grey here and I'm doing a little shadow under his mouth, along the bottom of the muzzle, um, just under the waistcoat here, and along the bottom of the tail. So anywhere where the shadow would naturally fall, um, obviously on the white I'm going to use a grey because it, it just sort of matches and it looks it looks right. So there, where the waistcoat would cast a little shadow on his tummy, that's what I'm colouring it, and then a few little hairs as well. Lovely! I think that's good. Okay, he's looking good. He needs something to stand on so he's not floating in midair. So I'm just very, very quickly going to sketch in a little bit of ground, just using some of the colours that I've got close by. A little bit of pale blue and maybe a bit of darker blue and um, I think I'm going to add something else in this picture because he's obviously thinking some naughty thoughts so I'm going to draw something next to him that he can be thinking naughty thoughts about and thinking naughty thoughts about stealing that pie so there he is and now I'm going to take my pencil and I'm going to roughly sketch out where the table's going to go so again just lightly with the pencil I'm sorry if you can't see it too clearly, but it's just because I'm not pressing on very hard at all. If you don't press on, it won't mark your paper and you can rub it out easily. So there's my ellipse that I've drawn for the top of the table. And then I'm just going to indicate where the legs are gonna go. And I fancy twirly wrought iron legs. And then I'm going to show you where the bottom of the pie would be in the middle of the table and the dish would pop up like that. And now I'm gonna get my pen. I say I'm using a pen today just so it really stands out on the screen and you guys can follow what I'm doing. So let's draw the pie dish in. And there's the lovely deep juicy pie dish that Grandma's made. And then I'm doing the lovely kind of a curly pastry crust, so a lovely wavy line. You know, the, as if people are pushing their thumbs in the pastry to seal it, you know, like they do on the Bake Off. Or any other baking programme, for that matter. And the little slits at the top where the steam escapes from the pie. And uh, ooh, that's looking nice. And a few more bits just to show where the thumbs have been pressing the pie down. So that looks great. Now I'm going to do the rest of the table. I'm going to follow this line for the ellipse. Doesn't have to be perfect. Nothing has to be perfect. So it doesn't matter if it's absolutely, you know, not wobbly. It doesn't matter. I can't help but wobble my hand nowadays. So there you go. So there we go. And there's the side of the table. Let's just give it a bit of depth. And now I'm going to do the legs of the table and just very, very quickly and roughly a lovely twirly line like that. Great. And just go back up. I love tables like this. I'm a real fool for them. I think they're gorgeous. Very French. Trishik. Little band around there. And I'll just put a little bit of decoration, I think. Mm, trying to be careful not to smudge. Just some little um, circles, because often these... These tables are made of metal and they kind of have holes punched in them to let the rain go through. So 
I'm just going to add a little bit of that detail. You could do whatever you like. It might be um, a scallop shape or flowers or anything you like. It's totally up to you. shadow, a little bit of twirly pattern, just need to add a little bit of steam coming out of that delicious pie, so a little swirly line, there you go, just like that, great, great, and just need to add a few little details, I think I'll do some of the pattern on the pie dish, and then just a few little bits and bobs, and we are nearly done bit more smoke that is looking very good thank you for making it this far if you're watching and you're drawing along with me well done it's a little bit more complicated than mr wolf but i think it's really worth it look how wicked and naughty he looks i love him so now it's time to sign your piece of work all illustrators must be proud and must be credited for what they do there we go thank you for watching I hope you've enjoyed it. Bye-bye. See you for the next tutorial. Bye.